Hey guys, this is Colin Moshman for PostFlopizer. Today we're going to be talking about using PostFlop solvers for tournament spots. Now, GTO solutions are all well and good for cash game players, but what about if you're playing Synengos or MTTs where you can't just apply the same solutions you can to spots where all chips have the same value? Now though with PostFlopizer, we can actually come up with full GTO solutions to tournament hands. And I'm going to show you how to do that in this video. First thing we're going to do is look at a hand from Syningo. I have this loaded up. We can toggle nicely between PostFlopizer and ICMizer in the upper left. So this is going to be from a nine-man Syningo. And therefore, with four players left, we're on the bubble. Hero has a nice chip lead, two short stacks. And the player in the big blind is going to be Villain here, who is second in chips. So we open, he calls, and even though we flop a hand with some showdown value, we still see bet. And this turn card doesn't change the board texture much. Maybe we should check back, but no, we keep firing. And now we catch true showdown value. Maybe betting doesn't accomplish all that much, and yet hero jams. So the question here is, is this too wide or is this taking good advantage of the fact that the big blind has to be very tight stacking off here with the shirt stacks? So we're going to take a look at that. And also from Villain's perspective, let's take a look at what he calls with King Jack suited. So is this too light a stack off given the fact that if he loses and he's wrong, then these other two short stacks are just going to ladder up as a result. So we're going to answer all these questions in post Visor. And the first thing we need to do is load up the hand. So there are a couple of ways we can do that. One is by edit stacks. We can put it in exactly as we want. And the other is by paste hand. So this is really quick and easy. If you're going from a hand history, you just click paste hand. It's going to show up perfectly here and even the flop is input correctly. So let's take a look at a couple of things that we can do here. One is we want to make sure we have the correct structure. So you can create your own, put in a custom structure, use one of these presets. And this is perfect. I'm just going to put in nine man turbo and have this up. Um, if you want to edit anything, you can do that here. MTT mode would only be if it was from an MTT and there are multiple tables left. So this is looking pretty good here. And then we want to put these players on ranges. So the cutoff is going to be us and we can just put in what our opening range would be here in the spot. And you can save ranges that you like. So here I have a cutoff bubble opening range. And basically what we're saying is that because we are the chip leader, we're going to be pressuring our opponents opening very wide um, but not any two cards we'd have to call off the five blind stack which we wouldn't want to do with junk so here i have this pretty wide range of a bit over top 50 percent of starting hands you can edit it however you want for your own range and then for the big blind put in the range that you think your opponent is likely to defend with preflop so here this is not for a particularly large fraction of his stack so i have him defending fairly wide including lots of these suited hands that play well. And also we have discounted premium hands that we assume he's either going to three bet small with, maybe aces and kings, as well as jamming some hands like ace king off. Maybe he'll just go ahead and jam. So we've discounted them using the bucket selection tool and put them in uh, exactly as you want. You could have them make some light three bets as well and stay balanced. And this is how we're going to have it for this particular hand. So at this point, you can go ahead and click Calculate, be straight off to the races. But let me just show you guys a couple of other things you might do using Advanced. So we're gonna stick in Tournament, go on Advanced. And this green just means that this is the actual action that took place. So forgetting about our default sizings that we can put into the program, uh, this is what actually went down and we can see these and also modify them very easily in the tree preview and editor. And they're going to show up these actions in green. So there's nothing showing up in green right now, but that's because we are beginning with the out of position player who just checked. There's no, um, nothing else going on here. And we're going to see the first green action. Once we select that check, action is on hero. And he can either bet the default 60% of pot C bet 
or the green action, which is going to be what happened in this hand. And a lot of the time I like sticking with the in-game actions. And you can delete either one of these very easily from within the tree preview and editor. So the actual hand that took place, if we want to do it, would then be a call. Our opponent checked again. And we'll just give one sizing option, the 1,000 ships that was wagered in this hand. So we have another bat and a call. Our opponent checks and we jam. So anything else that you want to adjust here, you can definitely go right ahead and do that. The other thing I'll show is if you wanted to eliminate this, you could just click off here and just go back to the default sizings. So we have everything in here as we want. I'm going to go ahead and click Calculate, and we'll take a look at the result. So here in the Results Analysis tab, we have our desired exploitability reached. We have nice, accurate results. So the flop is dealt, and the first thing we're going to see is the strategy of the big blind. And he is supposed to simply check to the, the cutoff the guy who has the betting lead here and not have a donk betting range. So let's now progress to Hero. So Hero is supposed to see bet very wide in the spot. He's supposed to see bet top 78% of hands. And here in pocket hand, we can take a look at what that looks like. So one thing we might be interested in is simply what should we do with our ace nine off? So of course the green uh, boxes are going to be check the orange are going to be bet and we see that we are mainly checking back with this ace nine off you can consider the the specific combos overall we're, we're checking this particular hand um 79 percent of the time approximately and the main time that we're betting it is with some of our combos that have a heart so here ace of spades nine of hearts we can go ahead and select this uh, on the left and we see that we are going to check at 62 percent bet 38 so either option is fairly reasonable um, but overall we're c betting very wide and in made hand plus draw we can take a look at that so here when we have premium hands sets two pairs over pairs uh, we're mainly firing um, the kind of hands that we're checking back are going to be some of our weaker hands so for example, with medium pair hands, if we had pocket nines, we're checking those back, uh, king high hands. And here in made hand matrix, we can take a look at any specific combination we want. When I say combination, I mean combination of hand strength and draw strength. So here, for example, with high card, um, no made hand, but flush draw, we're mainly going to be betting those. And on the right hand side, it shows which combos those are. So for example, that's going to be uh, Jack eight of hearts and ace three of hearts. Hands like those, we are mainly going to go ahead and bet. Um, if we want to take a look at medium pair hands, we can do that. Um, medium pair hands are usually going to have no draw or just a backdoor draw. And so we can drill down very specifically in the made hand matrix. Another one we're going to look at, which is pretty cool, is if we look at how these two ranges do against each other. So here on the left is going to be the big blind. On the right, we're going to have the cutoff. The cutoff does have higher equity. Uh, his range beats the big blind's range. And he's going to have uh, more sets. And you can take a look for each of these hand categories. So for example, here, if we want to look at ace high and king high hands, we can see what that looks like for both of these players and break that down very nicely. Also in pocket hand, you can take a look at the equity that any given hand has. So here, for example, with the ace nine offsuit, this means that we have 45% equity with ace nine against the big blinds defending range. You can pull up strategy at the same time, do the same thing with EVs, so another cool way to visualize it. Once we go ahead and fire, how should the big blind respond to that? The answer is that he's not supposed to raise much at all. 
He's only supposed to uh, call or fold. And he's going to call with his stronger hands, fold his weaker hands. Um, if he has draws, he's mainly going to call them rather than raise them. And so with his actual hand of King Jack suited, for all three King Jack suited combos, 100% of the time he is supposed to call. So, so far his decision to call is looking pretty good. So we have a bet of 400 and a call. And because we've loaded this hand up by pasting from a hand history, post up eyes are automatically is going to know the turn card, uh, which is this deuce of hearts. We would expect that the big blind is going to be checking most or all of his range rather than suddenly donk betting at this point. And the program confirms that we're supposed to check. And this point, the hero is supposed to slow down a bit. So even though he can really pressure the big blind, he's not just supposed to barrel everything. And it shows that you can take this idea too far. You know, you can say, well, my opponent is the second chip leader and I'm just going to barrel everything. And if you did that, that would be taking it too far. So this is a very interesting result. And so now we see the hands that we are supposed to follow up on with, with the turn C bet. Um, one thing too, which is interesting is maybe this deuce of hearts is a bad card for us to barrel and that our turn C Bepperson is very dependent on what the turn is. And we can look at that very neatly. Uh, we'll do that in just a second and see how our turn C bet percent is impacted by exactly what the turn card is. So here with our ace nine, the question is, do we go ahead and fire? And the answer is yes, we are supposed to continue firing a lot of the time. And with our specific combination of ace of spades, nine of hearts, we are supposed to continue firing. So this is going to be a good turn C bet by hero. And you can continue to drill down in the same ways. You can also look again at this, uh, this tail of the tape, which is cool. Let's take a look now at turn runouts. So what turns were we hoping to see? Maybe this was a bad turn for us. So we can take a look and select cutoff EV, insert these. So aces would have been good ones for us. Um, we can take a look at our turn C bet as a function of what this is. And meanwhile, what are going to be some of the worst turn cards for us? Worst turn cards for us, two of hearts. Um, queen is going to be bad. So these aces are very good for us. And we can take a look at uh, similarly for, for the big blind. The big blind is going to be very happy to see these, these queens. Um, so very interesting way to look at how the turn card is going to affect uh, both players strategies so in game we bet a thousand and the question here is what should the big blind do and the answer with this king jack suited is he's going to go ahead and always call with the three king jack suited combos um, overall he's not going to have much or any raising range and he's going to go ahead and call 60 percent of the time fold 38 percent of the time if i were to click here all the hands that he's supposed to fold would then show up on the left. So for example, most naked queen X hands, he's supposed to simply fold. For interest in hands he raises, it's going to be an occasional um, bluff here. So we can go ahead and bluff shove ace deuce off and take a look at the specific hands we raise. But for the most part, it's going to be call or fold and the programmer tell us which hands to do those with. So we have a call and the river pulls up. We again, as the, the big blind, go ahead and check pretty much our entire range. And this is a very surprising result to me. Um, so here it was supposed to check back the majority of his hands. You might think, as I personally would, that to apply ICM pressure, we should go ahead and empty the clip a tremendous amount of the time. And that is not the case. So with Ace-9, we are supposed to check back our showdown value. And if we were to take a look at our betting range, um, 
usually a river jamming range is going to be fairly polarized and we do see that we are supposed to jam our strongest hands so full houses flushes um, but when it comes to two pair hands this is not the case so even hands like east king suited are not strong enough to value shove and then on the weaker side we're going to go ahead and jam weak pair hands so weak pair hands are mainly going to be when we play the deuces on board and we just have a high card and we can take a look at what we're supposed to do with each of these hands um, if we take a look at after we jam is our opponent supposed to call it off with king jack suited so he folds about two-thirds of the time calls one-third of the time king jack suited is going to be a fold so what is this calling range this calling range here is going to be these hands on the left that show up in blue and on the right hand made hand strategy there are of course no more draws they can have so these will just be made hands and he's going to call with full houses with most uh, but not all flushes with his two pair hands so in other words, uh, king x, queen x, nine x, he's mainly folding. Weak pair hands, he's going to fold. So what we see from this hand is that both players make a mistake on the river. Hero should check back with his ace nine and take his showdown value. And villain is not able to call it off with his king jack suited. Um, with the ICM tax, he needs uh, a strong hand or a hand that works well in terms of blockers and king jack suited is not a good candidate to call it off with and as usual when you're using post op visor you can go ahead and change any of these parameters very easily so for example you could go ahead and change uh the river card or change it not just uh here in line navigation but by clicking on river runouts and you can also take a look if the action were different so let's say here that instead of checking the flop, you might say, well, I'm, I'm picking this opponent who's actually donk bending quite a bit. And so we can take a look, the flop is dealt. And you can see what happens if you um, instead donk bet. Here might not be letting us do it because the percentage is literally zero. Um, but any sequence of actions you want, you can go ahead and pull this up in the post flop visor. Uh, so this is a very powerful way to look at all of your sitting go and tournament hands. Uh, thanks for watching. This has been Colin Moshman for Post Visor.